Hello, and welcome to part 3 of my introduction to quantum computing series. I've been working on college applications and exams for the past few months, but now that I've completed those, my upload schedule should be much more consistent. In the last episode, I walked through the transformation of a single constraint into a cubo matrix. This video is essentially a continuation of the previous video and stems off of its information, so if you haven't seen it yet, please take a moment to watch it. In this video, I'm going to talk about the construction of cubo matrices with multiple constraints. Let's start off as we usually do, with a basic example. So here we have a brief description of our problem in English. We have two identical boxes and enough sand to fill exactly one box. Our two conditions are the following. At least one of the boxes must be completely filled in, and due to our quantity of sand, no more than one box can be filled in. This is where the knowledge from the previous video comes in. We start off by creating our cubo equations for the two conditions. As a reminder, here's our old reliable cubo equation format. We have x1 and x2, our qubits, which in this case represent our two cardboard boxes, and the adjustable weight variables a1, a2, and b12. So let's start off with the first condition. At least one of the boxes must be completely filled in. Remember, when it comes to writing cubo equations, you want your correct solutions to have lower energy levels than the incorrect solutions. So in this case, we want x1 or x2 to be equal to 1, meaning it's filled with completely with sand, or both. In all cases but the first one, either x1 or x2 is set to a value of 1, meaning that the first case is the only one that does not satisfy our constraint, as both x1 and x2 are 0. So we use our system of equations to find out that our constant c is 1, a1 is negative 1, a2 is negative 1, and finally, b12 is 1. So that's wonderful. We have one of the two cubo equations down. Our next step is to translate our other constraint or condition into a cubo equation. No more than one box can be filled in with sand as we have exactly enough sand to fill in one box and one box alone. In this case, we get our system of equations ready and set our energy levels. Only the last box does not satisfy our condition, as we don't have enough sand to completely fill in both box 1 and box 2. So its energy level is set to 1. The rest of the equations satisfy our condition, as either one of the boxes is filled in, or none of the boxes are filled in at all. And so in this case, after solving our system of equations, we find that c is 0, a1 is 0, a2 is 0, and b12 is 1. So here's our empty cubo matrix for a constraint with two variables. The only problem is, well, our cubo equation. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Whatever shall we do? There's only enough space in our matrix for one of each value. Well, the answer is surprisingly simple. You add them. Yep, that's it. All you have to do is add the a1 values together, the a2 values together, and the b12 values together. We use the sums for each variable to create our combined cubo equation, and then map it onto the matrix. And we're done! Now we can double check this with what we would expect logically. Let's put the numbers aside for a second. We know that our two conditions are at least one box must be filled with sand, and no more than one box may be filled with sand. So our end result has to show us that either box 1 or box 2 must be completely filled. And that is the addition of our English conditions. And so we could have created a cubo equation that immediately satisfies both constraints by turning those two constraints into one English constraint and then making that a cubo equation. Our first case and fourth case would have energy levels set to 1, as they are unfavorable cases where either no boxes are filled with sand, or both boxes are filled with sand, which violates our combined equation. Cases 2 and 3, the middle ones, have an energy value of 0, since either box 1 or box 2 is filled with sand, which also uh, satisfies our combined equation. And what you'll see here is that we end up with the exact same cubo equation that we got when we added our original individual constraints mathematically. Now why did this work? It just goes so far to show that the English constraint that we originally have is the mathematical cubo equation that we end up with. We just do the addition at a different time. Originally, we did our addition at the end when we translated two individual constraints into cubo equations and then added the numbers, but you can also take the two English constraints and make them one constraint and find the cubo for that. It's a very versatile process and a lenient translation to work with, as you can do your calculations at pretty much any part of the process and still end up with something to map onto a cubo matrix. 
All right, let's cover one last concept before we wrap up this video. Let's say we wanted to add a three variable cubo equation to a two variable cubo equation where we introduce an object x3. The end result is, well, it's exactly the same type of calculation. Even though we now have values a3, b13, and b23 on the matrix, it doesn't really matter since we just add up all the individual values together, meaning a1s together, a2s together, b12s together, b13, and b23. So b13 plus 0 and b23 plus 0 is just b13 and b23 of the original value. This means that no matter how complex a condition may be, it can be added to conditions of any other complexity. Meaning you can solve a problem with both complex and simple constraints using annealers. And that should be it for part 3. Once again, if you haven't seen part 2 of my Introduction to Quantum Computing series, be sure to check that out. This video is a direct continuation of part 2 and won't make sense without it, so that may clear the topic up for you. If you're still confused or have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments in this video. I would be happy to answer your questions as best I can. I want to thank you again very much for your patience in the development of this series. Now that my college applications are done, I have more time to edit videos and should have a much more regular upload schedule. Thanks for watching this episode, and I'll see you in part 4.